Americans have dominated this year's nine 500cc World Championship races. 21-year-old Freddie Spencer has won five of them. Number three on the works 500cc three-cylinder Honda. 31-year-old Kenny Roberts on the V4 Yamaha has won the other four. The result is that Freddie Spencer, the man who is only in his second season of World Championship racing, riding against the veteran 31-year-old Kenny Roberts, whose autograph he once proudly got when he was younger, is now the man who is not only one of the hot favourites to win here today at Silverstone, but is leading the World Championship. Freddie Spencer then leading the World Championship, but at one time he was leading by 26 points. Now, as a result of the recent run of victories by Kenny Roberts, his chief rival, the gap is only five points between them. There are 12 rounds in the World Championship this year. This is number 10. Randy Mamala, another American, on the Suzuki is in third place, as you see, so three different makes of machines. Then the Japanese rider, Katayama, ahead of Eddie Lawson, who is Kenny Roberts' teammate, and Mark Fontan, the leading private rider, a superb sixth on his V4 Yamaha. Now, today, we have the prospect of Freddie Spencer battling against Kenny Roberts then. There is the grid. As you see, Kenny Roberts is in pole position and Freddie Spencer is right alongside him. But the class of the field in terms of practice times has to be Kenny Roberts because he's gone round two seconds inside the lap record at a speed of 119.7 miles an hour, breaking Barry, unofficially breaking Barry Sheen, there is Kenny Roberts, number four, unofficially breaking Barry Sheen's four-year-old lap record by some 2.64 miles an hour. But speeds in the race are going to be much slower than they were in practice. In practice, they have the opportunity to go absolutely flat out over a very short distance, whereas in the race they've got to keep it up. There is Takazumi Katayama, that's Chris Guy, and there Kenny Roberts. And they are now on their warm-up lap. This is the lap that precedes the start of the race, which is going to be over 28 laps, 81.2 miles. The lap record, as I said, the target is that of Barry Sheen from 1979, 1 minute 29.9. And as most of you will probably know, Barry Sheen, number seven, look for him, has little chance of doing well in this race because of there he is. Barry Sheen is riding a machine which frankly is not capable of keeping up with the top works bikes. He's got a next 1982 works engine, there he is, Barry Sheen, who won here uh, two years in success. He's been world champion in 1976 and in 1977, and he's only 14th in the world championship this year. So it's a sad fall for the man who fell off his machine so dramatically and damagingly in practice there he is at that very point he came off on the approach to Woodcote and had that result which must have produced the most famous x-ray pictures of all time of his shattered legs and the repairs that Surgeon Cobb did so brilliantly to them but up at the front now Freddie Spencer alongside the pole position. There is Freddie Spencer, only 21 years old. He comes from Shreveport, 15 points for a win. So you can see there that he won the, the uh, South African, the French and the Italian Grand Prix in rapid succession. Then he was fourth in Germany, he won again in Spain and in Yugoslavia. He was third in Holland and second in Belgium, 105 points. Well, there's the man. It's doubtful that his Honda is quite as quick on balance as the Yamaha of Kenny Roberts, but on the other hand, Freddie Spencer is famous for his rapid starts. Kenny Roberts is equally famous for not getting away quite as quickly as he would ideally like. And don't forget that uh, Spencer fell off on the first corner last year. That is Ron Haslam, 
Britain's hope now that Barry Sheen regrettably seems to be out of the top running and Ron Haslam there started off brilliantly with two third places in the South African and French Grand Prix then broke his arm, broke his own arm in one of the races and he's only just re recovered from that and as a result of that Haslam, number nine, who is riding one of the works Hondas, the same as Freddie Spencer, is in ninth position in the World Championship with 23 points and he finished eighth in the Belgian Grand Prix and he's definitely a man to watch in this race because superbly he is in sixth position on the grid on the front row and there you see Eddie Lawson's bike number 27 that's uh, Kenny Roberts teammate Eddie Lawson who's riding in his first 500 cc British Grand Prix fifth in the world championship with 54 points the quiet man who comes from Los Angeles having been the American champion and number eight the machine you saw on the left was the works Honda of the Japanese X350cc world champion Takazumi Katayama seventh on the grid he's won 11 Grand Prix in his career he's won world, cha world championships and uh, is too a man who could do extremely well but that's my point of view nobody knows more about motorcycle racing than the man alongside me seven times world champion John Surtees and as we look at on the right Kenny Roberts number four and next to him number three what do you think? Well, Murray, it's one of those races where obviously the World Championship is the main contest. I think the weather is obviously worrying them as they sit there on the line. Talking to Kenny before the race, he said that he wasn't too concerned about making a uh, quick start because he preferred, in fact, to sort of power through the, in the early stages, and this got him into the right groove. Talking to Freddie, well, Fred is, a, Fred is a little concerned about the type of power he has here. He has plenty of top-end power, but he's concerned that it doesn't really work out right on this circuit. He has to do about six or seven more gear changes per lap than, for instance, the Yamaha, because of the inferior power characteristics. But on the other hand, he's a real trier, and the Honda is a very handleable machine. 28 laps, and... Uh the race is going to start in about 40 seconds time. Very soon, the 30-second board will go up. Number three, Freddie Spencer. Alongside him, number six, Randy Mamela. Then 27, Eddie Lawson. And alongside Eddie Lawson on the front rank is number 10, Mark Fontan with the Yamaha. But these are the two men to watch. World Championship leader, number three, Freddie Spencer Honda. His rival and friend, I emphasize that, number four, Kenny Roberts. This race is absolutely vital to the World Championship chances of both of them. And it's go. The crowd literally roars and Spencer blasts off. And Roberts is left a bit behind. And it's Ron Haslam and Freddie Spencer into cops together with Randy Mamela behind them. And the crowd roars as they see them. Ron Haslam is leading the British Grand Prix. Rocket Ron is away on lap one. The man who has only just recovered from that arm injury. He's in a superb state of mind. There is Randy Mamela and the distinctive style of Ron Haslam. And now Freddie Spencer is right up with him and through. And Mamela is in third position. The World Championship leader, Freddie Spencer, leads as they approach the fastest part of the course, Hanger Street, which is the long drag, 160 miles an hour. They're into Stowe, and Kenny Roberts is up into fifth place. And it's Spencer leads. Mamela is second. Haslam is in third place. Roberts is up into fourth place. And Jack Middleburg, the Dutchman who won here in 1981, is right up there too. Then the rest of them go through. Number five there is ex-world champion Marco Lucinelli on the Honda, who seemingly is well out of the running in the British Grand Prix. Didn't do at all well in practicing. And that is the wonderful shot from Club up to Abbey. From Abbey to Woodcote to complete the first of 28 eight laps with Freddie Spencer going into the right-hander at 120 miles an hour and leading from Mamela. 
So there is Honda leading Suzuki. Now, Randy Mamala, number six, won here in 1980. He's got a lot to do because although he's in third place in the World Championship behind Kenny Roberts, as he looks over his shoulder, he says, and Roberts is third, ahead of Haslam. Haslam down to fourth, Roberts up to third. So the three Americans who lead the World Championship on lap two now are first, second, and third. It's Honda leading, Freddy Spencer. It's Suzuki second, Randy Mamala. It is Yamaha third, Kenny Roberts. It's the second works Honda of Ron Haslam in fourth position. And that is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of as we watch Kenny Roberts trying to catch Randy Mamala, and he is catching Randy Mamala, and therefore catching this man, number three, Freddie Spencer, 21 years old, one of the youngest riders in the race. There's Haslam, there's Middleburg, and in sixth position is Lawson, and Barry Sheen is in about 12th position, and that's good. Number 14 there, Loris Ricciardi. And the first three are breaking away. Haslam is still fourth. Roberts in third position is now right with Spencer and Mamala leads. Randy Mamala, has he been sandbagging in practice, is in the lead as they come up to complete lap two in this 28-lap race, and in the second place goes Kenny Roberts. Kenny Roberts has displaced Freddy Spencer, so Suzuki leads Yamaha second, Honda third. They go over the line together, they being Roberts and Spencer. And Randy Mamala, 22 years old, from Santa Clara, California, is making the most now of his incredible 11 years of top racing experience because he started when he was a young boy and he's now leading the British Grand Prix on his four-cylinder across square four, Suzuki. Mamela, Roberts, Spencer, the very distinctive yellow and white Suzuki. And this is something that people, I think, would not have predicted. Look at the gap that's developing between the fight between the three Americans and Kenny Roberts is there. Now on lap three, Kenny Roberts has taken what many people regard as his rightful position, which is first. And Haslam is still in that fourth position. Well, Kenny Roberts was in a class of his own in practice, John. Well, Kenny, I was timing through Woodcote here, and Kenny was picking up a fifth of a second on everybody all along. And he's absolutely sort of riding at the peak of his form. The important thing about it at the moment is that he's enjoying his racing. He really sort of is back into a groove where it's giving him tremendous thrill. And this is very important. And in motorcycle Grand Prix racing, as in car Grand Prix racing, tyres are one of the main factors which affect whether a right machine and rider are going to do well or not. Kenny Roberts is using British, is using Dunlop tyres and Mamala and Spencer in second and third places behind him are using French Michelin tyres. So since the Dunlops we know have gone a full race distance in practice tests at racing speeds, it bodes well for Kenny Roberts. He's leading and this is lap four. It's Roberts leading, it's Mamala second. Right behind him is Freddie Spencer. There, it's Lawson in fourth position. Mark Fontaine, number 10, is in fifth place. Lawson, number 27, the American, who is in fifth position in the World Championship, riding with his teammate, Kenny Roberts, who is there in the lead. And we have spots of rain, as we had in the 250 race. Let us hope that they, they hold off. And Spencer is challenging Mamela for second position. Well, this is just the sort of race that uh, Roberts wanted to have. He wanted to come through from behind at the start and then put together a few very fast laps and cut to break away. An amazing testimony to the skill and coolness of these top riders was the way Kenny Roberts languidly turned round and looked to see where the opposition was. He saw behind him Mamela, but now coming up to take fourth position is Mark Fontaine, or is it? No, Mark Fontaine, the Frenchman in the blue leathers on the V4 Yamaha, challenging Eddie Lawson, who is now fourth, and Spencer is right up with... Mamala, there is fourth, Lawson, fifth, Fontaine, sixth is Takazumi Kantiyama, seventh is Ron Haslam. And in eighth position, I, it looked very much to me like Jack Middleburg, but the leader, Roberts, is not coming away now from either Spencer or Mamala. 
Lawson is holding on to that fourth place, and you'll see him come round the right-hander in a moment. There is Lawson fourth. Fontan is fifth. Sixth is number eight, Katayama. Seventh is number nine, and that's Haslam. And in eighth position, it is Jack Middleburg on the Honda, number 22. And this is that five. Well, Roberts is probably getting a few of those specks of rain onto his uh, visor, and so he's sort of there doing not exactly the 100%, he's doing the 99% job, and awaiting any de deterioration in the weather. Ken Kenny Roberts has been racing at the top level for 13 years. Multiple champion in America, and well down the field is Barry Sheen. He is in 12th position at the present moment. And that's uh, out of the World Championship points because the lowest position you can get a World Championship point in is 10th place. But Barry's got a long way to go now. The lead has come through and complete the fifth lap in this 20 act lap. And, no and Nobby Clark, the very famous mechanic, needs to be, yes, the, but, but as we look at the race now, with no definite knowledge that it's being stopped, there are no flags out where I am. Freddie Spencer on lap six has retaken the lead and the green flags are showing the race is being continued which i find surprising but the acu know what they're doing and so the race is continuing with freddie spencer now having retaken the lead from his friend kenny roberts down to third position goes the previous leader randy mamela and we're getting the same sort of race in the 500 cc british grand prix as we superbly had in the early 50cc British Grand Prix. Spencer looks over his shoulder. He sees Roberts behind him, who's got Mamela behind him. And then it's Lawson in fourth position. It's Mark Fontan in fifth position. In sixth place, it is Tekazumi Katayama. In seventh place, it is Ron Haslam. And there is the leader. Well, this shows... Well, the riders are... Riders are coming in now off the course. They must be seeing flags in a, in a, off a point where we are. They are not in our sights because riders are streaming into the pits. And there, nevertheless, the yellow flag is being waved and the British Grand Prix is being stopped. Well, it looks like perhaps the riders themselves are bringing this about because I can't actually see the black flag out. I think you're right, John. So it I would appear... See, there is the oil flag. This is a sort of discipline which is being brought onto it by the riders, it would appear. And, uh, you know, this just shows the responsibility of these people. And this will be the first time that I can recall where the riders have voluntarily decided during the race to stop it of their own volition and to come in in order to give unfortunately peter huber the chance to be removed from the course i'm not so sure Mario, that there wasn't two machines involved in that they look they look to be well I th uh, this is incredibly confusing and worrying because look you can see spencer haslam and Rob uh, uh, roberts are going on they're riding on now admittedly not at flat out racing speeds and i simply cannot understand what is happening we the red flag has now been produced at the start. Kenny Roberts has been gesturing at the start officials. The gesture we assume meant, why aren't you stopping the race? Where is the red flag? We've seen other people riding in. But it is uh, a, a worrying and surprising situation that apparently and I emphasise that I'm talking inefficient. Uh, 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 I'm talking unofficially. The uh, the riders have unilaterally decided, or multilaterally rather, decided to stop the race. Well, anyway, the flag, the red flag, has gone out to show that the race is officially being stopped. There is the sort of communication network which is available to the officials here of the Auto Cycle Union. There is the red flag. And what an awful tragedy from every point of view that a race which was showing so much promise and such a magnificent battle between the two top riders of the year should have to be stopped in this way. Well, there is... Let's make no bones about it, some confusion about what is happening. It is clear, of course, that the race has been stopped. 
when it is going to be start started again and over what distance we do not know but Barry Gill is down in the pit lane with Barry Sheen well one man who isn't confused is Barry Sheen he's explained Murray that out of camera something happened we didn't see Barry what exactly happened I, I honestly don't know what happened but there's an accident around the back as you come out of uh, I don't know what the name is one of the right hand corners and it's pretty nasty there's bikes all over the track and that and um, there was cross flags there an oil flag and a yellow flag which means stop so what the bloody hell the other lot are doing going round I really don't know I mean you saw that signal straight away Barry yeah, I saw it and it stopped well, that's what they thought isn't it <laughs> Barry what what happens now to riders like yourselves we've got to go out all over again knowing there's been as you've said a fairly nasty accident well it's I, don't, I didn't see what happened in the accident, you know, I, I think we're all aware that accidents can happen, probably me more so than a lot of other people, and it's one of those things that happens. Barry, thanks for talking to us, and good luck in the second part of the race, and let's hope it's not as bad as it looks. Thank you. Yeah, I hope so. Back to you, Murray. Well, if I have been maligning the organisers, and indeed the flags were out, uh, apologies, uh, but uh, for whatever reason and whatever way, as you see, the British Grand Prix has been brought to a halt. I don't think it's going to be very long before it's restarted.